Good morning. And just like that, it's the end of August. Where has the summer gone? It's just flown by. We are really glad that you joined us this morning for our online service, wherever you may be. And whatever time of day you're watching this, we want to bid you a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening. As I've said, it's the end of August, so it's the last of our August services, which have looked a little bit different, as church always does for us here at DEC in August. Before we get on to looking at our next instalment, or our last instalment in the Gospel of Mark, uh, we will have some time of worship, we will have some time of prayer. Let me just pray for us before we begin our time together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the summertime. Uh, we thank you for the, the change in pace that it always seems to bring. We pray that we would all have found rest physically, but also spiritually as well. We pray you be with us this morning as we take part in this service, even though we're not taking part in the way that we would like physically uh, in the church together. Uh, we pray that you would bless us and encourage us through what is to come. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Show me who you are and feel 
So what you're about to see is the last in the conversations in the Gospel of Mark that Johnny Somerville and I had, which we recorded for our teenagers in Encounter. It's the last one, it's the resurrection. It's no doubt the best part of the Gospel of Mark, the thing that really makes our faith. The fact that Jesus died, but he also rose again. We hope that this is a really beneficial and a blessing to you as Johnny and I discuss some of our favorite parts from this piece, this, from this piece of scripture. We hope you enjoy. Uh, here we are, Ross. New week, new location. New me. It is actually. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that head, huh? Yeah. It's good. To be it's fair, good. Yeah. Naomi had done such a stellar job. Thanks for the cross off. You're welcome. Um, you've dropped a little bit on your jumper there. Um, I actually am very envious. I wanted that cross on. I'd should... give you some, but uh, germs. I know. Um, Naomi had been cutting my hair all lockdown and had been doing really well. Mm -hmm. And then, obviously, my hairline is what it is, but the bits at the side were getting all like awkward. So it's just like Naomi, just shave. Mm. So she shaved. She's good. You look well, you know? You're a fine man. Oh. We were recording yesterday for uh, Super Sism. And Ross was, uh, was in front of the camera where he likes to be. He did a good job. <laughs> we were out in Grey Sons and it was horrendous weather. Uh, it was, it was so like misty. winter? It was like winter. Doing a rock service in November, that's what it was like. Jumping in the sea. Jumping in the sea. You gotta tune in. Quality content. <laughs> Quality content. You put a little bit of icing sugar all around the mouth. Great. You're a disgrace. Get out your phone. You're a disgrace. I've got a little. Uh, I've got a little quiz for you. Okay. Um, I have chosen, found five photos of me and you <laughs> throughout the ages. Oh gee. I and uh, I will send you one. Okay. And you tell me what year it was. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Like super easy. What year? What year? Okay. What was the year? All right. Yep. Here we go. Number one. What year was this? Hmm. <laughs> that was. You have to get three out of five to win. By the way. Ooh, I'm gonna say that was. You got three seconds. 2011. 2010. Oh. Ooh, so close. That is middle point. What about? But this it was the 2010-2011 season, so that's Get out of town. What about this? We're looking great, by the way. Look at this. 20... 2016 or 2017? Three seconds. Three, two, one. 2017. Correct! Yes. One, nil! Alright, we are amongst the herd here. Oh my gosh. This is a, a little while ago. Okay, yeah. Where am I? Where are you? Um, there oh, we are. I see you. Look at the, <laughs> <laughs> the stadium. Where am I? Uh, where are you? Oh, yeah. I'm oh, there you are. <laughs> uh, that will be 2005. 2006. Oh! That's right. Uh, what about this little puppy? Uh, do you remember that lad? Mm. Oh, he was really nice. Um, that's afterwards, for sure. Three seconds. I I'm going to say 2008. Nine. Nine? The one on the bikes is coming next, isn't it? Nope. What about this little number? <laughs> you pretty much can't win. No, you'd get these final two to win. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, Great pose, by the way. Oh, yeah. Great pose. Well, all right. Also, look at this. I'm always above you. I, I, look, yeah, like yeah, a, I look like a different person. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm going to say 2006. Nope. Close. Seven. Oh, I've been close with all of these. Uh, okay, final one to have a respectable score, but you still lost. I did. Uh, do you know what? What year was the bike? The bike. Uh, do you know what? I've no idea what year that was. Look uh, at us enjoying each other's company. Riding through the streets of London on with the bikes. I don't know. Um, Twenty thirteen. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you got uh, two out of five. You failed, but, but at least fun. you fail with a little bit of respect. It was close with those. 
That's closer for us. Honestly. Mm. So what part of the Bible are we looking at today, bro? <laughs> I, I feel like we can't talk about the resurrection of Jesus with you looking like this. <laughs> <laughs> so we've obviously we've we've come we've come to the end of Mark. Yeah. We started looking at Mark together when we were looking at the, the videos in and around the different geographical locations. Yeah, do you remember Francis Chan when we had his help? Yeah. His videos probably much better than ours. And so we've hit this last part of Mark, this part where the story sort of ends but also begins because well we'll look at that a little bit in a second but there's a few things that come to mind um, as I was reading this over the past few days I'm going to read the first section mm -hmm. um, and this is the part after Jesus has been buried so this is Mark chapter 16 okay. when the Sabbath was over Mary Magdalene Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus's body very early on in the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb and they asked each other, they asked each other, who will roll the, roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? And I was reading that and I kind of thought to myself, they fully still expected Jesus to be in the tomb. They fully still expected Jesus to be dead. Mm. They, they weren't going with any sort of anticipation that Jesus wasn't going to be there. They've gone and they've kind of asked the question, who's gonna roll the stone away so we can get in? And they brought the spices because this was tradition of the time. And I was kind of going, these disciples and um, relatives of Jesus and friends of Jesus had no expectation or anticipation that he was going to be risen from the dead. And as I was reading this, and people kind of talk about the Gospels being fabricated, made up. They talk about the Gospels being um, written by those who will be able to tell the story so that they look good. Mm. But actually, the disciples and those who follow Jesus look ridiculous. Mm. And I think it gives the Gospel accounts. Three times Jesus said that he would rise on the third day? Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe four. More. Yeah, maybe four. Um, like he made a pretty big point about it and he made it kind of that he was going to come and die and rise again but very specific about the third day and so actually these guys look silly and I, you know you don't write if this stuff didn't happen you don't write it you don't make yourself look silly mm. you don't make your you know your, your friends look silly like really silly yeah um, yeah they were certainly slow you did a little bit about that on Noah didn't you you kind of talked about that yeah I suppose like if you're if you're trying to paint yourselves as a leader of a whole new movement uh, and you are trying to fabricate it yeah you wouldn't leave those bits in and then kind of just as we were moving on um they they get there the stones been rolled away and there's 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 somebody in the tomb saying don't be alarmed he said you're here looking for jesus the nazarene mm. who was crucified he has risen he's not here see the place where they led him but go tell the disciples and peter he is going ahead of you to galilee there you sorry there you will see him just as he told you just as he told four you four times four times <laughs> or we should really find out what the real answer to that is but it's again this sort of theme because i think the last two weeks i made comments about how jesus had said about little bits and pieces that were going to happen he planned he prepped it was almost like jesus was was talking about the future mm. he knew it was going to happen and again in the culmination of the story of jesus's life he's risen just as he said he was going to. Yeah, yeah. The resurrection is, is where it's at as well. It's always been the, it's been the game changer. That's why the Apostle Paul is like, if this didn't happen, our faith is meaningless. Mm. You know, Christians are to be uh, pitied above all else. The way he's, he's, he says that. And, but this was the beginning of a new road for them. Like the resurrection, obviously, it was such a, a turning point for so many of them. Obviously, Peter that we talked about before. But all of those disciples would have went on to do incredible things, the sharing of their faith, such courage. And I think when they really grasped the, I suppose, the beauty of the resurrection, new life, and the, the fact that if they were going to die, there was like no fear because they realized that you know, that's the beginning of, or like right now is the beginning of eternal life, mm. regardless of my earthly death, yeah. whenever that comes. Because when they saw the resurrected Jesus, like, this is for real. Mm -hmm. And so we need to capture that in our own hearts as in, 
the beginning of our eternal life starts now. Yeah, Death yeah. is but a comma um, mm. for what is for what is true for us. Um, and, and yeah, it's a, it's a journey of, of, of uh, coming to understanding of that in our own hearts, having the courage to live a resurrected life, um, that this is the most important news that needs to be shared. Mm. Um, but it, as, you, as, as you said, so many things can have a new beginning, mm -hmm. regardless of our past, yeah. regardless of what we may even do, even as a Christian, yeah. you know, uh, God loves to rewrite yeah. our mistakes. Uh, yeah. And like, it's this whole new way of life, like Jesus came and he showed a whole new way of life, mm -hmm. a whole new attitude. The Sermon on the Mount that we've been looking at as a church, the Beatitudes, these are the new attitudes that you're to have which are different from society and when Jesus you know obviously the person in the tomb says Jesus is going to meet you in Galilee and this is what he said he said to them this is what you've just touched upon go into the world mm. and preach the good news to all creation whoever believes and is baptized will be saved but whoever does not believe um, will be condemned and these signs will accompany those who believe in my name you'll drive out demons they will speak in tongues, they will pick up snakes with their hands, and when they drink deadly poison it will not hurt them, and they will place their hands on sick people and they will get well. And Jesus is kind of saying that the resurrection reality now is that you carry this forward. And these things that you've seen me do in terms of turning people's hearts towards mm. back towards God, and um, signs and wonders and miracles, um, they are possible as well um, and this is what we are to step into telling people about this this new way of life the things yeah. that are now possible praying for things praying for people um, that's what we are now to be hello everyone just want to uh, read a verse from the scripture in Exodus 15 and verse 13 before we pray together and that verse says, in your unfailing love, you will lead the people you have redeemed. In your strength, you will guide them to your holy dwelling. Let's just pray together. Father, we are so blessed and thankful as we come into your presence today. We are the people you have redeemed. We have experienced your unfailing love and our sin has been removed from before you because Jesus took it all and nailed it to his cross. Because of Jesus, today we call you our Father, and you call us your children. Father, we worship you for who you are, the living and eternal God, the creator of the universe, all-powerful, glorious, and forgiving God. Your mercy is new every day as you lead and guide us through life's journey. Until that amazing day, when we enter your holy dwelling, and see Jesus for the very first time. Father, we have such a hope, and we praise you and thank you for it. Father God, we want to pray especially today for your children who live in countries where they face repression and fear, prison, even death, simply because they love Jesus. By your Holy Spirit, we ask that they would experience your joy and peace in their hearts today. Give them your strength to stay faithful and resilient, to be able to give a reason for the hope they have in their hearts. So like Joseph, their oppressors would see and know the Lord, their God, is with them. We also pray for our country, our new leadership and government. Each minister and policymaker has powerful influence. Many don't know you. Some even willfully stand against you, yet you are a merciful and loving God. And we ask, Father, that you would intervene and direct their thinking and purpose as decisions are made, so your will is done and your name honoured in our country. Father, our world is changing, but you remain the same almighty God who watches over all the events of our world. Today, as your children, we commit ourselves again to you and ask you to lead and guide us as we journey on towards your holy dwelling. Amen.
Father, as we continue to battle COVID-19 and the fallout of this pandemic, we thank you that we know you are still on your throne. We put our trust in you, knowing that your perfect love drives away all fear. We are thankful for those who have fought and won the battle so far. And we especially give thanks for the wonderful care and self-sacrifice given by our own healthcare workers here in DEC and across our country. Today, we especially bring before you those who are struggling with illness, grief, mental health issues, loneliness, financial worries, maybe lost employment, and the pain of not being able to see their families or friends in hospital or living abroad. Father, we pray they would not lose sight of the fact that they are not alone. You are our strength and our help come from the Lord who made heaven and earth. We pray for our young people who have been so brave and patient during the interruption of their schooling and social interactions. We are thankful for the gifted youth leaders who have been so resourceful in trying to keep them connected to one another and to you. As they begin to slowly return to a new normal, we pray for their protection as they face school and college in very different ways. May they know the support of their church family and leaders, and most of all, the peace and love of a heavenly Father who cares for each one of them. Father, we are so blessed to have our older people who have been the backbone of our church, praying and interceding for us over the years. This is a difficult time for them and they deserve our care and support. Help us to be mindful of their needs and to remember to pray for their continued protection in the days ahead. Father, thank you for our leaders who have so faithfully endeavoured to keep us all connected as a church family. No weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. We are eternally grateful that your name has been continually lifted high. We give you all the praise and we trust your almighty name. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen.
So there you go. That wraps up our August services together. We really hope that you enjoyed them despite the fact that they were a little bit different. Johnny and I really enjoyed getting together, discussing scripture to, with one another uh, and shooting those videos. I pray that that might even be an encouragement for you. I pray that you may get together with somebody that you know and you read the Bible together and you unpack it. I learned so much from Johnny in those times together and I know that he learned so much from me as well. Getting together and reading the Bible with our friends and with our peers is so valuable. Join us next week online as our services return to a little bit of normality. We really hope to see you then. We hope you've been blessed and we hope that you have had a good summer. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.